Hello again, and welcome back. I am McSnazzy, and today we are back in Planet Zoo for a brand new build video. But before we get into it, please consider subscribing down below. It's completely free, and it really does help out the channel. Now today we are building a penguin center. And if you are not familiar with the format of these videos, it's going to start with a time lapse with commentary included, and then we're going to switch on to a real time walkthrough in game with some live commentary. Now, if you're not a fan of time lapse, I always put in the description down below a timestamp to when the real time walkthrough starts so you can see the finished product of the build. If you're not interested in watching all of the information on how it's built through the time lapse, which is kind of long, it took tends to be about 15 minutes per episode so if you are more into just seeing the final product and just uh, with a little bit of live commentary for about you know a four minute walkthrough you can check that out in the timestamp down below click that it'll take you right to where you want to be if this is not for you also if you did not see the first person tour video I did of this whole build about a few days ago when I'm gonna upload this video um, it is with no commentary and just all the in-game noises, no music, no nothing. It's a little more immersive, a little more uh, relaxing than this video will be um, because it has no commentary and all that jazz. So if you're interested in that, you can see that in the description below as well. I'll put a card up in the top right corner right now as well if people still use those on YouTube, but it's a little more old fashioned. But to get into the build now, let's talk a little bit about this. Um, the inspiration for this build for me is to pretty much try to do a recreation of what you're seeing on the screen now, which is the Polk Penguin Conservation Center that you can find at the Detroit Zoo. And uh, it's one of those cool buildings that I've been to in real life. And uh, when it got built, um, I, you know, toured it and everything. And I thought it was super cool. And I always thought I'd never do this sort of design things in Planet Zoo because I, I'd more like to stick with the whole traditional style buildings, none of these like modern weird shaped buildings, that, which kind of what it looks like right here. It It's supposed to look like a big iceberg, right? Um, it's supposed to look like where the penguins, you know, hang out on big icebergs in the Arctic, so... Uh, that's sort of the look I'm trying to go for here. Uh, I got the inspiration, I thought, hey, let's do a cool big build because I wanted them to add penguins for a long time in the game. They end up adding penguins so I'm like let's do a big build. I'm gonna try to do a recreation of this and when you do a recreation in the game you never get everything the exact same or exactly perfect as you'd want to um, to be you know completely true to the original but I just wanted to at least get it close and sort of my iteration of the original design of the building and then the insides kind of pretty different because you can't really do all that they did in there with uh you know you walk under the water and penguins are swimming above you and stuff like that if you don't know what it is you can check it out online there's a there's a nice gopro walkthrough video on youtube as well um that i found that helped me a lot get a lot of these shapes right and everything for the building but you're sort of seeing and you have been seeing in the time lapse up to this point me trying to design this shape um, basically a facade for the front of the building um, it's not going to like correlate to structure necessarily. We're going to do sort of a block behind it. But from the paths that the guests will be walking on, you can see the structure. It looks cool. It looks like a bunch of weird lines, like a big iceberg um, made completely of art shapes in the game. Not the piece I wanted to use, but the only piece that would work for what I wanted to do. Because in Planet Z, you can't really do a lot of unique shapes. Um, you can pretty much do blocks and you can do triangular shapes but when you try to do something weird organic like this even though this isn't really necessarily organic there's a lot of harsh lines but try to do something different abstract maybe is the word i should be using try to do something like that in planet zoo it doesn't really want to cooperate unless you're using pieces that aren't on the grid so art shapes are not on a grid, so I can use art shapes. Basically all the materials I wanted to use that were wall pieces were all on the grid. Wasn't possible. So we had to do the art shapes. I think it looks good, but you know, it, it has its limitations. 
For instance, when the lighting's a little weird on the art shapes, you can see all of the little individual blocks that are placed together to make the shape that it looks like. When the lighting hit it's fit perfectly, as you can see the front of the building right now, which is to the right on the screen if I ever show it, um, it kind of shows a little bit. You cannot see any of these little lines, but from what we're looking at right now, you can see these lines. So when I take, you know, pictures of this, and when we, we do our walkthrough, I'm going to need to adjust the lighting so it hits the shape perfectly. <laughs> That's the only way to make the art shapes work. Um, they're very, very bright as well, so it doesn't really look like it's a building. It more looks like it's just super shiny structure, which, you know, is, is the game. But you do what you got to do, and uh, I think it looks good in the end. And the art shapes did me good. You know, I never wanted to use art shapes in this game because I think it's just hard to make anything look realistic or good um, because it just ends up looking really shiny and just like weird. I don't know. I just don't like the art shapes too much. Not not that I have anything against the art shapes. I just don't think they make realistic buildings. They don't. They doesn't look like buildings in the end. But this one looks what it looked like. Yeah, I'll show reference picture again. Yeah, as you can see here. This is the back now. We showed the front before. What we're trying to build on the screen right now. But I'll, I'll go into a little more in depth when we go through the real time walkthrough. Because a lot of this footage for the uh, building of the outside of the building is a little boring to watch in time lapse to be honest. So I have a lot of other footage of us making the penguins habitat which is a lot more fun and people like doing that in Planet Zoo a lot more so I try to show that a little more. So now that we have the shape of the outside looking great as uh, you know as good as we can do for it for this build I'm working on the inside now. Now I should have made in hindsight the habitat first and then done the building. Um, but really for me, I wanted to create the building that was the big part of this project. Not necessarily the habitat, because it's almost impossible to do exactly what they do in real life in terms of the habitats for the penguins. Because they have a lot of these uh, tunnels that you walk under the water, they swim above you, a lot of different viewpoints that you can see. And it's just, the gist of it is it's almost impossible to do in the game. The game limits us, we can't put structures or glass underwater or let alone paths anywhere that we really want to put paths because the path system in this game is atrocious to say the least. I mean, it, it gets the job done, but man, it's, it's very limited, very limited. So for the basic design of the penguin enclosure, it's sort of you walk in on one side and then you walk down to see the underwater viewing, so to say, and then you walk out the other side and you can see penguins on each side that you're sort of uh, walking through. So you'll get that in the tour. If you've seen the other tour that I did already and posted, you'll know what I'm talking about, but you'll see soon in the live footage. And uh, after a little bit of this time lapse is over, it was it was a long project. It took me a, a week and a half or so to do. Um, and I was exclusively doing this for a lot of that week. So that being said, you know, it, it, it took some time. It took a lot of tweaking. A lot of this changes. What you're seeing on the screen right now, we're going to change it around a little bit. It's going to be a little bit different here and there. The final product looks great. I'm happy with it, but I went through a lot of different iterations of it as I normally do. But here now we're going to try to make a little cave for them. Um, penguins typically don't really sleep in any sort of shelter. They kind of just hang out in the middle of nowhere, sitting there, huddling, um, and you know, sitting on their eggs or whatever. If you've seen March of the Penguins or Happy Feet or something like that, I think that's where I get most of my penguin knowledge from, so it might be incorrect. Um, I have no idea, I'm not a penguin expert, but using what I know from those films, I, I guess that's what I sort of based this uh, habitat off of, but I also used a lot of uh, images from the actual Polk Penguin Conservation Center that I'm basing this off of um, to sort of guide my knowledge to make a realistic sort of penguin enclosure. Um, also making it look good because at the end of the day, I still want to look at something that looks good as well. Um, balancing sort of the realism with looks in the game because it is a game, it's fake, you know, um, it's not it's not exactly to real life, but usually the realistic stuff does look good in the end because it's done for a reason in real life. So, you know, it works out in the end. 
But overall, a lot of detailing for this habitat and for this project in general is going to be rocks. I wanted to go for a big rock field, uh, rock feel, because penguins, you know, they live on giant rocks, icebergs, they live in these tundra environments, at least these king penguins do that I'm doing here. I know there's other penguins that live, you know, South America and different parts of the world where it's not super arctic, but, you know, this specific species lives in that type of area and that's sort of the feel I'm going for here and uh, so that's exactly what we're gonna do lots of rocks and and in the end in the real-time portion you'll see that I tried to do a lot of rock uh, for the decorations so it kind of feels like you're in an iceberg maybe in like an ice cave in sort of this penguin center it's not really like this in real life for the actual Polk Penguin Conservation Center that I'm basing it off of but I thought it was a really cool idea to sort of like immerse guests in sort of a penguin center where it feels like you're inside of like some ice cave or a glacier, like how it looks like an iceberg or a glacier on the outside. It's like you're walking into it. So there's a lot of rocks on the walls. It feels like you're in sort of that area. And it's just, uh, it's, it's a lot more fun to play with it that way than, you know, just like a, a complete building. I think it adds a little bit of decoration, a little bit cooler feel. So at least that's what I felt like in this situation. I don't know if it landed well, but I hope it did. When you see how the finished product turns out. Now for here I wanted to do add a little more of land space for the penguins, that's why I ended up sort of going and doing all this uh, extra terrain work now that we're, we've done sort of the initial sort of area where they're going to be standing on. It turned out being not enough at all. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't really like how it looked either. It just looked like a solo island in the middle of, like, an ocean. And so I made it a little better. We added a little walk-up area over here. They actually have this at the actual Polk Penguin Center where there's, like, a little like a little shallow area right in front of that glass there where the penguins could theoretically, you know, kind of waddle or swim up to to, to see the guests. And I kind of want, I like that aspect when I was watching or looking at some photos of the actual exhibit in real life. So I thought I'd copy that idea here. And I just kind of look how the uh, the deep water looks. You know, you do a little bit of terrain work down there, make it look like there's different levels and you can put that like grass in there as well that they've added with the aquatic pack. And I, I kind of like the feel. It's fun to make these little underwater environments. And you know, for this exhibit especially, we have a whole underwater viewing area. So it is something that, you know, we need to detail and it just adds a lot to the exhibit as a whole and sort of elevates the level of detail that the and realism that the exhibit has in the end. Now I'm going to do another sort of land area over here and we're going to end up making sort of a land bridge to the original little lake area where I have the where I have the cave and sort of the uh, the staff entrance over there so that initial little island that you're looking at um, I don't think we add the land bridge right now but it might be off camera but it's this gives the penguins a little more area for them to walk around on and they have a few different little islands and a lot of water space as well because the penguins really do like the water space uh, to sort of keep that realism as well. And I'm kind of playing around with these uh, sort of enrichment items that the penguins have. Uh, there's just kind of a few, it's a little limited I would say, but I don't even think that in real life that penguins would even have a lot of enrichment items because they kind of really don't have a lot out in the arctic so you know it, it makes sense. But they do got some cool ones. I like the little uh, little sp sprinkler they're not really sprinklers those little jets over there on the other island to the the left side when you're looking at it straight on so i'll, I'll show that more in the real time portion but I, I like that one i like the underwater feeder a lot but that platform i have in the middle of the water haven't seen him use it at all um it doesn't really go with the feel of the habitat but i left it in there because i kind of wanted to see what it did um but i haven't seen them use it at all so i'm not sure what that one's used for but you have a rubber ducky too and I haven't seen that go in the water. And here we're going to make the land bridge and uh, adjust some of that underwater scenery that I think looks great. Create sort of a little pool over there in the, the corner and then do a big skip ahead to uh, me making it entirely out of the snow and putting in a ton of rocks. So this is sort of what we're going to end up in the end. Um, I did a lot of off camera work because it just was a lot of repetitive uh, placing of rocks like this. And, uh, you know, putting down snow, I kind of went for a tundra field as opposed to like the rocky, sandy field that I kind of had originally. Here we're starting to do something really cool that I thought was a, a little unique to this uh, habitat. 
And a lot of the footage, and you know, I've seen this in real life, it, it seems like the water's like flowing, like there's jets in it, kind of like a hot tub. <laughs> that makes a little bit of sense, like a jacuzzi. So there's like jets flowing, I don't know, maybe to simulate the ocean and waves a little more. So I tried to do that as best as I could with the limitations of the game. I ended up using like the river, I think it's like rapids, so, one or something I don't know I don't know what it's called but rapid something special water effect and I did them in every direction and sort of like a 360 like four of them so it kind of looks like it's like pulsating in these little waves and it it looks a lot like the habitat in real life and that's what I was going for so it's perfect and we also have some of these little underwater bubbles now so the underwater feels you know a little more immersive and cool and from here out, it's just some detail work to finish up the structure. I do a ton of this off camera because it was really boring. A lot of placing concretes, making custom stairs so it looks good, putting on a roof, and then adding decoration to the inside. And I'll show off a lot of that in a second when we are in the real-time walkthrough here. But uh, I just wanted to show a little bit of this on the time lapse so uh, you know you get a little bit of a feel of what's going on here. Primarily what I'm trying to do is put a lot of education aboards around to make it feel immersive because in, in the real actual center uh, the Polk Penguin Conservation Center. They have a lot of this education stuff, you know, uh, information about the first voyage to the Arctic where people first discovered penguins and stuff like that, you know. Uh, a little bit of extra. Not, not a lot of that that I can do in the game, but do my best, try to make all the walls interesting so they're not super bland. And as I said before, we're going for this whole rock feel, so you kind of feel like you're in the glacier rock or the iceberg, whatever it's called. And uh, so that's pretty much what we do throughout the walls, a little bit of the scenery here and there. But that's pretty much it for the time lapse. Um, it's going to stop here in a second. I will see you guys in a moment in the real time walkthrough, and we'll show the uh, finished product. Hello everybody and welcome back to the real time portion of the video. Here we are at the entrance of the final build. If you stuck through all the time lapse, we have done a little bit of work off camera as you can see. If you jump straight ahead to this part, well, let's just get into it. So from the front here you can see sort of the sort of shape of the iceberg that I was trying to go for in this build. For a split second here I'll show what it looks like in real life at the actual Polk Penguin Conservation Center. And here's what it looks like with our finished product, and I think it looks very similar, and it, it's exactly what I was trying to go for to recreate within the game. In the front here, I added this uh, little penguin statue that's not really in the real life version, but you know, gotta add my little spin on the build as well. But without further ado, let's explore the inside of the Polk Penguin Conservation Center. Right through here, you can see that we have a nice big viewing wall right here where the guests can see through the glass the penguins just hanging out down there and just uh, relaxing by all their bubble machines and waddling around out on the uh, icebergs there and they're pushing the ducky in the water and here's the uh, little spritzers I talked about in the episode that I really do like these enrichment items I haven't seen them use it yet but I like how they look and we have the sort of rapids feel looks like waves in the ocean exactly what we were trying to go for and I think this is a nice little view for the guests here in the front of the Penguin Center right when you walk in and I'm really happy with how this sort of area turned out. Now behind this first viewing area we have an education wall with this sort of feel if you weren't in the time lapse. I wanted to go for a sort of rocky feel like you were inside of the iceberg that we were going for with the iceberg look on the outside of the building. So we have it correlating now to the inside of the building filling up all the walls with rocks to make it sort of look unique in that sort of sense. And as for the ceiling, went for a skylight, of course, because in this game, the lighting doesn't really work unless you have sort of that natural skylight coming in. And, you know, penguins like it in general, and in a lot of uh, real-life habitats, they have a lot of skylights, so they get that natural, actual sunlight that, you know, they experience in the wild, the animals. And uh, so I think it turned out really nice, and it looks really good, and this education area is nice. But let's start heading down to the underwater viewing area. Um, here is some custom stairs that I made that go right over the path, and I really like how these turned out. They look uh, very nice, a little bit of a landing here with some benches and a trash can. Uh, the paths do clip a little bit through because uh, you can't have everything exactly perfect, but it does look like the guests are walking on these uh, custom stairs, so I like that a lot. 
Um, here's a little penguin guy sitting there. Some more custom stairs down here as we get into the underwater viewing area. Now this is sort of uh, some more of that rock work education as well. Here's that underwater viewing and uh, let me step out of first person really quick so we can get the feel without this glass sort of blocking us. And here we are without the glass sort of shading in front of us and it looks just great. The penguins look great. The animations that Frontier did for the penguins swimming look fantastic. I really think they outdid themselves there as they're fishing for the fish from this uh, little underwater feeder. And I really like how this underwater area looks with all the different levels of the terrain, rocks, the little bubbles popping up with the little vegetation as well on the, the ground. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it's just picturesque. And it, it looks really great. So let's jump back into first person and finish up the tour. Alright, now that we're done looking at the underwater viewing area, let's step back over these stairs, passing by some more education as well. But these stairs I like a lot better. They're, it's a little bit of a tighter area, so I was able to do sort of a circular, sort of spiral feel for this staircase as opposed to that one over there. And I really like how it turned down the end. I think it looks great. It adds a little bit more of that higher level of detail than just having the paths. And as we exit here, there's a little staff area, a little gift shop area as well with some bathrooms as well inside of there, just like in the real um, Pope Penguin Center. And this is sort of on your way out, you get a nice another look in the habitat. A nice viewing area with a little pond right there. The penguins just kind of hang out over here and uh, they look great. This is a really nice habitat. I'm really happy with the results and I hope you guys enjoy it too. Now let's step out here and see the rest of it. Let's see the view from the outside. We get that iceberg shape again. I think it looks really nice and I'm really happy with the result here. Little picnic area over to the left. And also what they have in real life is a little fountain over here, so I sort of did this as well, jamming a bunch of concrete block pieces into a small area to sort of get this. And we get that shape some more. It's just very nice, very uh, abstract and looks just like an iceberg, exactly what we were going for and I'm really happy with the result. So that is about it for the tour. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. I'll leave you with some uh, shots of the area now. Um, as we'll sit here watching the penguins, but uh, if you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. It is completely free and it really does help out the channel. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like. If you didn't, go ahead and dislike it. Uh, leave a comment if you have some suggestion, you want to know more about the build, or just want to chat about something. Um, I will be here with more content in the future. Stay tuned on the channel for that. And until next time, I am McSnazzy, and I'll see you guys later.